Let's begin our class with the word of prayer. Father, we thank you, bless you, we give you glory, all the honor and praise. Thank you for every student that has made it, oh God. Help us in our exams that, Lord, we may be persistent and even more committed. Thank you even for this class, ABD. Give us understanding, insight, wisdom, and knowledge from above. In Christ's name, amen. Thank you very much once again and most welcome. We are still doing the ABD, Applied Bible Doctrine. And right now, we want to proceed from where we had left. We want to look at Proverbs chapter 22, verse 1. Proverbs 22, verse 1. 22 and verse 1. Proverbs 22, verse 1. The Bible says, A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, and loving favor rather than silver and gold. I repeat, a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. Uh, we want to analyze a few words in here from the same passage. And uh, one of the words we want to look at is uh, name, because the Bible says a good name. Name. Name, the Hebrew word for name, Hebrew word for name, we are talking about Shamrab. Shamrab, which means name that has character. Name that has character. Name that has got character. Name that has character. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. Christ and his followers didn't have good name and reputation. Christ and his followers didn't have name, didn't have good name and reputation. Christ and his followers didn't have good name and reputation. Well, we had mentioned this before, that uh, Jesus had no name, neither his disciples. And when we talk of a good name, which is rather to be chosen, it simply means that the world will always find a reason to taint our names because of God. And so in the world, we might not attain to have a good name. By the standards of the world, they have a lineup of things that contributes to a good name which we may not be able to attain because we are not of the world. That's why Christ and his disciples didn't have a good name, no reputation. But when we have a good name and heaven recognizes that uh, we have a good name, then that name must have character. A good name that bears character. Establishing a good testimony is a good name. Establishing a good testimony is a good name. So before God, what matters is to establish, uh, to establish a good testimony. That of course, brother so and so loves God. Sister so and so loves God. Pastor so and so loves God. 
Bishop so and so loves God. That's a good name. And it is chosen rather than great riches. The people of the world today, they don't care what you call them. As long as they will have got their way, they have got riches. They get filthy riches from the blood of the innocent. They accumulate wealth by killing people. They gather themselves material gains by killing others. But that doesn't give them a good name in heaven. They might have a good name on earth because those are the ways of the world, but they can't have a good name in heaven because that's not the way to have a good name in heaven. To have a good name before God is to have good testimony, right stand with God, and to love God. A name that is established through character, workmanship, integrity. We have to note this one. Name that is established. Established. Through character, character, this is number one, character, workmanship, integrity, and discipline. Okay. Name that is established through character, workmanship, integrity, and discipline. That is what God expects of us as his children, of ordering people because of Christ. All this is because of Christ. And so a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than gold and silver. Today's world is fighting for gold and silver and even some preachers are after gold and silver without looking at their integrity, the character. So I'm just saying that James 5 verse 7 Every good and perfect gift is from above. Only God is able to reward us. Only God is able to give us the good and perfect gift. And also we can see that Hebrews 1 verse 4, Jesus had a more excellent name. The name Son is the perfect heritage. Jesus had a more excellent name. In heaven, Jesus' name rules. On earth, Jesus' name rules. Under the earth, Jesus' name rules. And every place you can talk of, the name of Jesus is still above every other name. So when the Bible says that a good name, uh, a good name is to be is to be chosen, Jesus Christ had the greatest name of all, and uh, we believe in that. Acts 9 verse 36, there is an example of a certain woman by the name Tabitha. She lived at Joppa and we can see that uh, she had a good name. Why? Because she used to help. She used to be uh, philanthropic and uh, she was remembered because of her good deeds and so a good name is to be chosen. Tabitha chose to have a good name before God even when the world could not recognize her because of her simple deeds 
but they were recognized in heaven. And so she lived at Joppa, and we can see it very clear at the time of her death that Peter and the other apostles were praying to God, and they requested and asked God to remember the good deeds that uh, <coughs> Tabitha had done. And so she lived again because of that. And again, we can see our human personality is not enough for what God wants us to do. Our human personalities, our human personalities, personalities are not, are not enough. for what God want to do. God want to do. <coughs> to do in our lives. <coughs> we cannot earn a good name by ourselves, <coughs> but we need to lean on the grace of God so that God can give us a good name, worth remembered, and a name that has got character, discipline, integrity in it. Because the devil always accuses us before God, as we had seen before, so as to taint our names. That's how he went about tainting the name of Jesus Christ. And uh, our human personalities is not enough for what God want to do. God has got good and bigger plans for us, but our own personalities cannot manage it. We need to depend totally on God. And we can see a good example is that of Peter. Peter had a great personality and even followed Jesus Christ after he was arrested. But his strong personality could not save him and we can see that the natural strength is a mess because when we struggle by our own selves, we fail miserably. <clears throat> That's why we have to depend on God, totally depend on His grace, His love and mercies, pray to Him as a sign of uh, dependence on God. And this is why we can see that Peter promised Jesus that He will be with him. He promised Jesus that I'll never let you down. I'll never disappoint you. But eventually what followed? Peter denied Christ three times, okay? John 15, verse 13. John 15, verse 13, and verse 24. We can see all this. Many times we tell God, God, I'll never leave you but we find ourselves leaving God. Instead, let us rely on God to hold us because once God is holding us, we can go nowhere. We cannot escape from his hands. And that's the reason why our strong personalities, our own wisdom, our own understanding cannot help us, but total reliance on to God and his word, total dependency on God. And that's why we see Peter messing up after making promises to God he could not fulfill his word. And when he heard that Jesus was being taken and arrested, uh, the first thing he, used to, he did was to remove his sword and cut the ear of the servants who were sent there. And Jesus is trying to show him that it's not by might it's not by physical strength. It's not how prepared you are physically. It's spiritual matters uh, you can handle and manage. Then Jesus healed the ear back again, and Peter was surprised. What is really happening? Because I thought I'm helping Jesus Christ, but nobody can help God, of course. We are only standing our position because God is almighty. He can just do everything by himself. But we need him. That's why we cling to him and we depend totally on to him. There was a certain uh, <coughs> doctor 
who was called Maxwell Knox and uh, he was a great plastic surgeon and this is the statement he made changing the outside appearance does not matter rather the inside change is the most crucial he realized that being a surgeon he was not helping people so much but rather opted to be a counselor since people's problems starts from the inside okay those are the statements of uh, Maxwell Knox who was a surgeon he was a well renowned a doctor and a surgeon but he came to a point of realizing that uh, uh, helping the outer body alone is never enough because the things which manifest in the outside body are from inside so he opted to become a counselor and so we who believes in Christ we are healing souls we are healing hearts that have been wounded. We give counsel as per the word of God. We give them direction, solution, and we are more than just mere surgeons who work from the outward body, but the inside is dying. If you are a child of God, you are more than a surgeon. If you are a believer in Christ, you are more than a surgeon because you are able to heal the person from inside when the heart is healthy and the internal organs are healthy, then uh, the outward will live. And that's how it goes. In Luke chapter 10, verse 22, Christ said to his disciples not to rejoice for any other reason, but that rather their names are written in heaven. Luke 10 20 the disciples came back to Jesus and they were yelling shouting rejoicing very happy demons are obeying us we commanded them in Jesus name and they got out but Jesus said to them rejoice not that demons are obeying you but rejoice that your names are written in heaven what is more important is that our good names be written in heaven okay a good name is rather be chosen. We have chosen to have a good name in heaven, not on earth where we don't have reputation. We don't have good names according to the standards of the world. The world expects you to have a big name that when it is mentioned, they can recall from the archives the things you did. This was Dr. So-and-so. He is the one that built this hospital. This is the person that was in charge as president of the republic and he did <clears throat> this and that. He built roads, he built uh, hospitals, schools, all these kind of things. This is professor so and so. He's the one that lectured me at the university and all these kind of big names which is good and okay but that is not a good name a good name is rather be chosen is your name written in heaven if your names are written in heaven then you are having a good name jesus said rejoice that your names are written in heaven because that is what count your education of this world will pass away everything the legacy that you left will one day be forgotten but a good name is rather be chosen that in heaven your name is written someday sometime you will appear before the throne of judgment and you will be able to explain yourself before god you will be accountable for the life that you lived on earth and a good name is rather be chosen from today work on your name to remain in the book of life by total dependency on god trusting God for everything because every good and perfect gift come from God. Don't waste yourself going astray because you want to have a good name on earth. Jesus wasn't a professor. Jesus was just a mere man and uh, people never even some never recognized his divinity that he was God. <clears throat> What Saturn wanted to get through rebellion, this one is so powerful again. What Saturn wanted to gain through rebellion 
what Satan wanted to gain to gain through rebellion through rebellion okay you remember what we learned he said I will ascend on high to be like most high okay you remember when we learned that he wanted to set his throne above the throne of God what the what Satan wanted to get through rebellion God has given us freely through a gift God has given us God has given us God has given us us freely through a gift and what is the gift Jesus Christ is the gift through grace or by grace God has given us what the devil wanted to take through rebellion the high position in heaven where Satan wanted is what we are seated today with Christ the high position high position Satan wanted to sit wanted to sit in heaven is where we are seated with Christ. What is our position in Jesus Christ? We are seated with Christ in the heavenly places on the right hand of God the Father. That's where the devil wanted to sit and he wanted to do it through rebellion but God has gave us he has given to us that position we are seated there with Christ we are seated there with Christ and that's where we are we are seated there with Christ and that's where we are the high position in heaven where Satan wanted is what we are seated today with Christ so if you are to be asked where you are you are seated with Christ in heaven our position is so high we are highly valued in heaven the world may not value us but we are valued in heaven I want to talk very briefly about this uh, what we call anthropopathicism Anthropopathicism. Anthropopathicism, what is that? It's the attribution of human emotions. Attribution of human emotions. Attribution of human emotions. Of human emotions. feelings feelings passion passion towards towards non human being non non human being Toward non-human being, 
generally to a deity. Generally to a deity. <clears throat> Anthropopathicism is the attribution of human emotions or the feelings or passion to a non-human being, generally to a deity. Okay. This is a way of how the infinite God reveals himself to the finite God. This is the way of how the infinite God This is a way of how the infinite God reveals himself to the finite man. <clears throat> this is the way of how the infinite God reveals himself to the finite man. When we say our Father in heaven, we mean that we live in anthropopathicism because we are out of heaven. Anything that is out of heaven lives in anthropopathicism and we are not exempted. This is the way how we look, how we have passion and emotion towards a non-human being generally to a deity. So what is our anthropopathicism? What is our feelings towards a deity who is God? He is our Father and we must have feelings and passions to him as our Father. is our father we are still moving on and they want us to continue we were reading proverbs chapter 22 verse 1 we want to look at uh, verse 24, chapter 22, verse 24. We want to see what it says. Verse 24, what does it say? By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Okay? By humility, let's look at this. Humility. By humility, and the fear of God and the fear of God are riches honor And lastly, there is what? Life. This is the word of God. By humility and the fear of God are riches. So, do you want to be rich? Humble yourself and fear God, okay? The way to become rich is not to kill people. 
The way to become rich is not to worship the devil. The way to become rich is not to grab land that belongs to the poor. The way to be rich is not through any other way, but through humility and the fear of God. So if you want to be rich as a pastor, humble yourself and fear God. If you want to be rich as a child of God, humble yourself and fear God. If you want to be respected and to earn some honor, humility and the fear of God. If you want to live long on earth, humility and the fear of God, okay? That's what the Bible says. Don't look for riches where there are no riches. Don't look for honor where there are no honor. Don't look for life where there is no life. You try to look for life in death, because I hear some people saying that, let's enjoy life. So you enjoy life in death. Is there life in death? You enjoy life in the pleasures of the world, which is death. You enjoy life in the things of the world. You enjoy life in the blood of the innocent. You enjoy life killing people and taking people's property. By humility and the fear of God, our riches, our honor, and there is life in it. If you choose humility, if you choose the fear of God, then definitely riches will come your way. If you don't honor God, if you don't fear God, you don't humble before God, forget about this, because you will be killing yourself. If you fear God, you will enjoy riches, honor, and long life all the days that you shall live under the sun. Okay? We want to look at, uh, we had jumped verse uh, 23, and there are some words there I want us to look at. It says, a prudent man foresee the evil and hides himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. I think I need to write this one as well. A prudent man foresee evil. A prudent man. A prudent man foresee evil. and hide himself. Himself. Okay? But the simple pass on. But the simple pass on and are punished. And are punished. Okay? So, we have some words here which we need to underline. We are having a prudent man. Who is a prudent man? A prudent man is a man that fears God. I want you to note that one down because it might come in your exams. Who is a prudent man? A man that fears God, okay? 
A prudent man is a man that fears God. And we can see I want us to read that scripture. I want us to read that scripture. Because I want us to get the exact, this should be, it should be 22 and verse 3, not verse 23, but chapter 22, verse 3, okay? So I read, a prudent man foresees evil and hides himself, but the simple pass on and are punished, okay? So a, who is a prudent man? I've already said that a prudent man is a man that fears God. And this word prudent in Hebrew, Hebrew word for prudent, is called Arum, 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 Arum is the word for prudent, which means ignore trouble, ignore trouble, just like the Bible says, a prudent man for see evil and hides himself. So someone who is prudent, they avoid trouble. If you see somebody who invites trouble to himself, then that's a stupid man, okay? That's an idiot. Because the Bible says a prudent man foresees trouble, but the simple, okay? A prudent man ignores trouble, ignores self, ignore self. So what is to ignore self? You ignore Adamic nature. Make sure you write your notes well. Not only ignore trouble, but also ignores self. What is to ignore self? Adamic nature, because the Adamic nature wants us to sin every time and to go contrary to the word of God, go against the word of God. So that is to ignore self. Ignore Adamic nature, ignore self, and don't follow what it teaches you, because Adamic nature will always lead you to sin. Adamic nature will always show you you are tired, you don't need to pray. It will tell you, you are tired, you don't need to read the Bible. It will tell you, you are tired, you don't study the Bible. Uh, like we, are have, we usually have classes. You are tired, you don't need the things of God. That's Adamic nature. And so, a prudent person, a room, will ignore trouble, will ignore self, and the prudent acts with knowledge, also acts with knowledge. Acts with knowledge. A prudent man doesn't 
act like somebody who is a fool, okay? Because he is somebody that acts with knowledge and is crowned, okay? Knowledge, crowned. A prudent person is crowned with the knowledge, crowned with the knowledge. Again, a prudent man perceives the evil. He perceives evil and act with understanding. A prudent man perceives evil and act with understanding. I want us to look at six things about a prudent man, okay? Six things about a prudent man. Six things about a prudent man. Six things about a prudent man. Remember we said this word man is for both uh, genders, okay? It's for both genders. So don't ask why is it man, man all the time. How about woman? So it contains both man. Six things about a prudent man. Proba Proverbs 12, 23, number one. Proverbs 12, 23, 12 verse 23, what does it say? He conceals his knowledge, a prudent man conceals his knowledge, conceals his knowledge. Conceals his knowledge. A prudent man conceals his knowledge. So how can you conceal your knowledge? You don't speak aimlessly, okay? You don't speak like a fool. You don't speak like somebody who doesn't understand whom he is. You speak with understanding and knowledge. That's a prudent man. You conceal your knowledge. You hide it, okay? You don't go to the media and just start speaking like an idiot because you are a prudent man. You have to conceal your knowledge, okay? That's one way a prudent person will act. Don't speak just for the sake of speaking. You have to speak with understanding, knowing the repercussion of the words you are speaking, because from the tongue comes life and death, okay? And number two, Proverbs 12, 16. Proverbs 12, 16. Ignore self. Ignore self. Ignore self. I've already said about ignoring self is to ignore Adamic nature, the sinful nature in us. Ignore it. Because if you work according to the sinful nature, then you miss the mark. And that is contrary to the word of God. And number three, Proverbs 14, 8. Proverbs 14, 14, verse 8. What does a prudent man do? Discern his way. Discern his way. If you are a prudent person, you must have discernment. 
if someone comes to you with a different spirit, you are able to discern, okay? You are able to know this way is misleading, so you are not misled. You need discernment so that you are not misled. Discern your way. Every time you do things, discern your way. Is this the right way to follow? Like now we are hearing of what's happening in different parts of the world. People are getting into some cults. Why? Because they don't discern their way. If you have discernment as a prudent person, then you will be able to know when things are not going the right direction and you will be able to conceal your knowledge by withdrawing yourself from such bunch of uh, people going astray. And also we can see number four, Proverbs 18 verse eight. Proverbs four verse. Proverbs chapter 18 verse eight. 18 verse eight, what does it say about a prudent man? Acts appropriately, acts appropriately. appropriately let's go to number five proverbs 14 18 proverbs 14 verse 18 crowned with knowledge crowned with knowledge a prudent man is crowned with knowledge Prudent man is crowned with knowledge, so it's not just uh, walking in folly, but crowned with knowledge. And number six, Proverbs 14, verse 15. 14, 15. Proverbs 14, 15. Knows where he's going. Knows where he's going. A prudent man knows where he's going. He doesn't lack direction because he is well informed, he conceals his knowledge. He ignores self, the things of the flesh. And we saw that the simple, they just enter into trouble and they perish. The simple are people who are ignorant, people who doesn't know God, people who care less about God, people who don't mind about the word of God. And uh, just want to wind up with this part now. God has given us free will to choose. God has given us the mind and the brain to use, okay? So you don't have to misbehave like somebody who is stupid, okay? You need to use your brains well because this is the power and the ability that God has given to us. And I want to define what we call the brains, okay? We will finish up with this. In the in our own minds and uh, what God has given us, we are having what we call the natural. This is the natural. And this natural is what is called the left lobe of the mind. Left lobe of the mind. left lobe of the mind. And what is the 
work of the left lobe of the mind. The work of the natural, which is the left lobe of the mind, is to receive. It receives. Okay? It receives the information. So like now, as I am teaching, your left lobe of the mind is receiving the word of God. The dominant temporal lobe, which is the left side, is the most, in most people, let me write it, the dominant temporal lobe. This one is also called uh, the dominant, dominant temporal left lobe. which is the left side which is the left side the left side in most people In most people is involved in understanding involved in understanding in understanding language and learning, learning language, understanding language, learning, and remembering verbal information, learning and remembering, remembering verbal information. verbal information. Okay? So, see what God has done for us, that he has given us the natural left lobe. Eh? This side, which is the left lobe eh? of the mind, which receives. And uh, we can see in most people is involved in understanding. That's what we've seen that uh, a prudent man should have, understanding. And that's why we used to hear teachers in school telling us, use your mind well, okay? <laughs> use your mind well, use your brain, okay? So even in God's kingdom, God is not uh, looking for stupid people. But he want people uses their brain because you are glorifying God when you are using your brain well. And it's used for understanding this side. It understands the language, learning like now we are learning, and also remembering verbal information. The things that you discuss the whole day, one year ago, is still on the left lobe of the brain. It still remembers how that teacher told you in school that you'll never become anything. You are as useless as, uh, <laughs> as dust. <laughs> okay? It still keeps the verbal information that you received. And now let's look at the other side eh, of the lobe. The right lobe of the mind. Have you written this one? The left, lo the right lobe of the mind. Right lobe. Of the mind is the actual place. 
of the mind is the actual actual place the non-dominant lobe it's also called the non-dominant lobe the non-dominant lobe Remember the left lobe is the dominant lobe, lobe and now the right lobe is the non-dominant lobe, eh? which is typically the right temporal lobe. It's involved in learning and remembering, learning, remembering, What does it remember? Nonverbal information. Nonverbal information. So, what do we mean by nonverbal information? Maybe somebody wrote to you a text, okay? Or a letter or something you read, like now you are reading. That uh, goes to the right lobe of the mind, the non-dominant lobe, which is to learn, remembering non-verbal information, and what else? E.g. visual, spatial, e.g. visual, Spatial, visual is something that you see with your eyes, okay? So the right mind keeps what you see. And uh, the left lobe is mostly verbal, what is spoken. And so we can see material, spatial material, Spatial material and also music. It's the right lobe that listens to music. So there are some people who overwork their right lobe by listening to music all through. Okay. Damage to the temporal lobes can result in damage to. temporal lobes results to difficulty in understanding spoken words difficulty in understanding spoken words Difficulty in understanding spoken words. That's why you can speak to somebody. Then why, when you are done, they ask you, what were you saying? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you explain, I want you to go to the market and buy some vegetables for 100 shillings, onions for 20 shillings, and some spices for 30 shillings, okay? Then they say, okay. Then again, they ask you, what did you say I buy? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, damage to the temporal lobes can result in difficulty in understanding spoken words. We have a diagram there which you'll see once you'll get the notes. And so we want to finish at that point. What are we saying by this? We are trying to recognize the great work God has done for us, okay? He has given us the brain to use, but you need to know how to use your brains well. Whether 
you are using the left lobe, you know what it does and uh, follow it up and also the right lobe which a lot of people are damaged by listening to music so much and the visual things, uh, the special materials. And it uh, keeps and remember the non-verbal information that you receive. So what you do with this information uh, is up to you now, but I believe there are good materials for you to learn and keep understanding God more so that uh, we don't become fools because the Bible is full of scriptures. God doesn't like fools, okay? He wants us to be prudent. We don't see trouble, then we fall into trouble and then we cry like hell. He wants us to see trouble and conceal our knowledge the way we have looked at it. God bless you so much and thank you for attending the class. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We bless you for this wonderful moment. We are done with our class today. Until next time, it's all for your glory and honor. Give us understanding and uh, so that we can use our brains well for your glory and honor. In Christ's name, amen. God bless you all. Thank you.